Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at uh, refraction. And this is a really interesting phenomena that occurs when a wave travels from one medium into a new medium. But before we go uh, deeper into refraction, let's look at some of the other possibilities because refraction is only one possibility when a wave encounters a new medium. So I'll draw a couple of pictures here, one for each of these three, absorption, reflection, and transmission. Uh, the idea with absorption is that when the wave comes in, it is absorbed by the atoms that are at that boundary between the surface. So let's say, for example, this was light traveling into water. Some of the light will be absorbed by the atoms in the water, and they cease to exist. Their energy is absorbed by the atoms in the water, probably mostly turns into thermal energy, but there are other ways that the energy can turn into. For example, the energy from light waves can turn into the electrical energy in a solar panel, but essentially the wave ceases to exist. Now, another possibility is that the wave comes in and instead of being absorbed by the surface, it is reflected by the surface and goes out in this direction. And then the last possibility is if it's not absorbed and it doesn't get reflected, it might get transmitted. And that is to say that it goes actually into the new, um, into the new medium. Now, generally speaking, when a wave encounters a new medium, some of each of these is going to happen. There will be some absorption, there'll be some reflection, and there'll be some transmission. It may be that one dominates, like with your bathroom mirror, reflection is pretty, is pretty dominant. Um, however, much of the light that you see uh, actually goes right through the mirror. It actually is not not reflected, and a small portion of it is actually absorbed by the, by the mirror. Now, this picture is not going to be very convenient in the future for drawing waves because um, it makes it a little difficult to see the, the direction that the wave is traveling. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you another way we can draw pictures using something called a ray. And a ray is just simply an arrow that indicates the direction that the wave was traveling. So it doesn't show the wave motion, it doesn't show the wiggling, it doesn't show the wavelength or amplitude or any of that kind of stuff. All it shows is the direction of the velocity, which is a very important aspect of wave motion is the direction that the wave is traveling. And I think you'll see when we look at these diagrams that the diagrams are a little bit cleaner when we draw them using the rays rather than trying to draw actual waves. Uh, and the idea with transmission is that the wave will go through and it actually does an interesting thing and that is that it will change the direction that it's traveling. Reflection will change the direction in a very simple way, but refraction which is the transmission of, of a wave into a new medium, that also um, will show a direction change. And we'll get into that a little bit more in the second video when we talk about Snell's Law. But for our purposes today, uh, we're gonna focus mostly on a different aspect of refraction. So let's leave that behind for the moment and uh, talk about what, what happens when, when light is refracted. So first of all, a really important aspect of refraction is the idea that what causes it is the change in speed. So waves like sound and light, when they go from one medium to another medium, they change the speed. So, and they work in exact opposite ways. So light, when the medium that it travels in has very low density, meaning that there are very few atoms, it travels very fast. And as you go through medium that have more densely packed atoms, then you'll find that the light will travel more slowly. Sound does exactly the opposite. Sound wants the medium, it wants the atoms. The atoms are actually what carries the sound waves. Um, and so as a result, when the medium becomes more dense, the sound waves travel better, they're able to travel farther, and they're also able to travel much faster. So sound and light very much opposites of each other. But because they change their speed when they enter one medium to another, it changes some of the other behavior of the, of the wave. And we're gonna take a look at that behavior in, the, in this video. Now in the next video, we'll take a look at the change in the angle, which is another thing. So that's not so much a change in the behavior of the wave, it's just simply a change in the direction that the wave was traveling. The the refraction will cause the wave to be bent so that it travels in a new uh, direction. And we'll take a look at that in the next uh, video. Uh, but what we're going to focus on right now is what happens to the actual wave itself. And what I mean by that is, I mean the frequency and the wavelength. How are they affected by refraction? So let's take a look at how those, how those actually work. So in order to help you understand this concept, I'm actually going to use something that is not waves at all. I'm actually going to use soldiers marching uh, and we're going to treat the soldiers as though they are the crest of a wave. So each soldier would represent the position of a crest. And as I move to the next soldier behind them or in front of them, that would represent each soldier would represent a crest that is in front or behind that initial crest. 
So I'm gonna split my paper uh, in half right now, and I'm gonna imagine two sides, and we're gonna send soldiers marching across the page, and they're gonna go from one medium, and that medium in this case is going to be concrete, And the soldiers are gonna march across and they're gonna to run to the end of the concrete and it's going to smoothly transition into sand. Okay, and I'm sure we can all appreciate that when you walk in sand, it is very difficult to move. It's, it's you walk much more slowly. Even if you run in sand, it's not as fast as you would be able to run if you were running in concrete. So for our purposes, we're going to assume that the concrete means that the soldiers will travel very fast and in the sand the soldiers will travel very slow and i would like to do more than just give them um fast and slow i'd like to put some numbers on this so that it'll make it a little bit more concrete for you to understand we're going to say that the fast velocity is two meters per second and that the slow velocity is one meter per second okay so now I'm going to put one soldier right at the border, right at the boundary. Not quite in the concrete, not quite in the sand yet, but right on the, the boundary. And what we're looking at right here is we're looking down directly onto the soldiers. So this is the top of their helmet. And we're watching them from this top view as they march across the, the page. Okay, now I'm going to put the soldiers uh, on the left side over here on the concrete side. And I'm going to space them out. Now, when I space them out, I'm going to give them a pretty wide spacing. So I'm going to say that the next guy is probably about this far behind. And then I'm going to try and be consistent with that and draw the next one about the same distance behind that. And one more behind that. Okay, so the soldiers, when they march, they space themselves out nice and evenly. And in this case, we're going to assume that the soldiers have a spacing of approximately two meters each. Okay, now since we said that the soldiers are going to represent the crests of a wave, then essentially from one soldier to the next soldier, we could say that's basically the same thing as the wavelength. So since the soldiers are spaced out by two meters, that means that the wavelength is also two meters. Now the question is, what happens when they transition over to the next, um, into the next medium? So let's just think about that. So for this soldier, one second from now, this soldier will move over and be right at the border here. This soldier will have moved over by two meters because he's traveling at two meters per second and he's two meters from the, from the guy in front of him. So everybody will move forward exactly by two meters and the picture will continue to look the same but it'll be different soldiers occupying these positions. Now, something happens really interesting when you get here to the point where you hit the sand. As soon as that soldier steps into the sand, he's going to slow down. So that means that this guy who is coming up behind him, he will start traveling very slowly and only go one meter, while in the meantime, the guy behind him will travel two meters, because that's how fast he travels every second, and the distance between these two soldiers will actually get shorter. It will get smaller right at the point where this guy transitions. So because there was a soldier in front of this guy, and that soldier in the previous second, he only managed to walk one meter, that means he is much closer. So I'm gonna draw that next soldier much closer on this side than I drew on the other side. Now, just think about what happened. This soldier, or let's take this soldier. This soldier traveled two meters per second. So in one second, he traveled to here. But this guy, in that same one second, because he was traveling in the sand, he only traveled one meter. So because this guy traveled two meters while he only traveled one meter, the gap between them has closed down. And now that gap is only one meter. And so therefore, since the soldiers' heads, the top of their heads represent the crests of the waves, the wavelength is also one meter. So just take a look at what happened in this situation. The velocity and the wavelength both decreased by the same uh, proportion. Not by the same amount, but by the same proportion. So these guys both uh, were at two and two, and they were cut in half and taken down to one and one. And the reason why the wavelength changed, again, is because the velocity changed. It's not the wavelength that changed and then caused the velocity to somehow do something different. It's because the velocity changed that necessarily means that we're going to have to change the wavelength because in that transition period, the soldiers will actually close the gap. Now, before the transition and after the transition, they don't change. Everybody stays nice and evenly spaced because everyone travels at the same speed. But at the transition, that's where the waves get shorter. That's where the wavelength gets a little bit, uh, a little bit shorter. So if you just think about what happened, V reduced in this example by one half, but so did the wavelength.
So now the question is, what about the remaining important wave property, the frequency of the waves? Were the frequency of the waves impacted by this? So let's just think about what the equation says should have happened. So the equation says that the velocity is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So if I were to solve that equation for the frequency, I'd find that it was V divided by lambda. So in this case, the original V and the original lambda were both changed so that I ended up with one half of the velocity, but I also ended up with one half of the, sorry, of the wavelength. One half of the wavelength. These two things are going to cancel each other out. So essentially what this is saying is that the frequency should have remained constant. In this particular example, when a wave transitions from one medium to another, and we see this change in the wavelength, we should not see a change in the frequency. Let's just double check if we go back to our example. Let's just make sure that we do get the same frequency for each of these. If I pick a point right here, okay, there's no soldier in front of me. Okay, now in the next second, what's going to happen is these soldiers are going to move like this. So this soldier will move over to here, he will move to here, this guy will move to here. So how many soldiers are going to pass me in every second? Well, it's gonna be one soldier. Right? Each soldier can move two meters in a second. So that means that this soldier will pass me in the next second. The second after that, this soldier who will have moved to this position, in the next second, he will pass me. So soldiers that are two meters apart, traveling at two meters per second, means that I will find that there is a frequency of one hertz, or in this case, one soldier per second passing me. But what about on this side? What if I put my pen right here? And I say, well, how many soldiers are gonna pass me each second now? So now, at this next second, this soldier will pass me, but no other soldier will be able to pass me because this guy will only move one meter, which will bring him to this position. So at one meter per second, soldiers are one meter apart. If I stand by and I just count every second how many soldiers are passing me, I will find that yes, it is the same number. There is one soldier per second that is passing me, so the frequency did not change. This is really important when you think about, for example, what if you were underwater and you had your eyes open and you were looking at a, at a red light? Would it still look red to you? Because as I just pointed out, the wavelength will be different. It is physically a different wave. But it's important to understand that what our eyes do is they don't measure the light by its wavelength. What they measure is the frequency of the light. So as the light passes through our eyes, it causes essentially a little sensor in our eyes to wiggle at a certain rate. And what our eyes register is that if that rate is wiggling fairly slowly, that must be a very long wavelength or a very low frequency uh, wave, and that would be red light. Now, if the light comes into our eyes and it wiggles the sensor a little bit more violently, then that's more towards the blue end of the spectrum where the wavelengths are shorter and therefore the frequency is, is higher. So our eyes do not measure what we see according to the wavelength of what we see. They measure according to the frequency. And you can see that if I was underwater, red light would still look like red, white, red light because it's still going to have the same frequency that it had when it was in the air. In fact, it wouldn't matter what medium I saw it in, it would always look red to me because it would always have the same frequency regardless of what medium that it had passed through. So this is kind of an introduction to refraction. In the next video, we'll take a look at what happens to the direction of the wave uh, as it strikes this medium. I had this guy going directly into the medium, but what if these soldiers had traveled in this direction? Uh, how would that have affected their, their direction of travel?